So you want to make a sick GTA style character transition in DaVinci Resolve? And this is the video for you. In this video, we're going to recreate the GTA character swap in DaVinci Resolve. All that coming up. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to be updated on the newest DaVinci Resolve tutorials put out. So this is an effect that I've always wanted to make and it's finally here. If you want to follow along, there's a link to my Google Drive in the description with all the images and the assets that I found online. Also later on in the video, I'm going to be doing a giveaway for a social media lower thirds pack in DaVinci Resolve that I made myself. I'm going to go over all the details in depth later, but let's just get into it. So to start this effect, we have to go into Google Maps and we're going to take four different screenshots of two different locations. Go into the menu here and turn off the labels for locations. So we're gonna zoom in on our first location and take a screenshot, zoom out and take another screenshot, move over to the second location, take a screenshot there, then zoom in and get a close up shot of this second location and take a screenshot. So now we have four screenshots, two zoomed in and two zoomed out. So for starters, in this effect, I'm using a 3840 by 1920 timeline. And also, it's a 30 frames per second timeline. We gotta drag our media onto the timeline. And you see here that we have these black bars on the side. We're just gonna remove all of that. Highlight all of these. You're just gonna zoom them all in like this, and it's gonna affect every screenshot here. So now that we've done that, we have to just quickly reorganize our clips, and then we're gonna go right into Fusion. I have one, two, three, four right here. So all I'm gonna do is bring one up to the second layer, keep two on the first layer, number three is gonna go on video layer number three, and the fourth is gonna go on video layer number four. So the last thing we're gonna do is highlight everything, drag it out to about eight seconds or so, right click, go to new fusion clip, and jump right into fusion. So now that we're in fusion, we're gonna do a few things. First, we're gonna disconnect this merge one from the merge two. And then we're just gonna grab it and separate them. Then I'm gonna delete this merge two node and connect merge three right there. So now you see they kind of just mirror each other. Now we're gonna add a transform node right here in, on media two and four. And then add a transform node after both of these merges. So before we jump into 3D space, we have to first get our image the way we want it. So we're gonna do the same thing twice, one here, and one there. I'm gonna put this transform here in my right view, and then in my left view, I'm gonna put this media two. We're not gonna do anything at all with this media one or the media three. The media two and media four are our close-ups. Then under your merge node, you're gonna to go to blend, and you're gonna drop it to 50%, and then click on the transform node and scale it down a lot. We're using this transform right here as our viewer so we can scale in and not lose the quality. So we're just gonna rearrange it to where it lines up. So once you think you have it lined up pretty well, you're gonna click on the merge node, bring the blend all the way up, and then go to apply mode. Bring that down to difference. Whatever is pretty well together, it's gonna be blacked out or something like that. So this looks pretty good here. So we're just gonna bring our apply mode and bring it back to normal. And then the final step for this process is to grab a rectangle mask, expand the mask, the whole frame, and you're just gonna soften the edges a little so this transition right here isn't as abrupt. Then you're gonna repeat the exact same process for the second section right here, literally doing exactly the same thing. So now that we've done the exact same thing on the second part right here, we're just gonna grab a merge node and we're gonna merge these two together. Instead of merging the image on top of one another, we're gonna merge them together like this. So with this merge two, we're gonna put it in our right viewer and then we're gonna go to the transform three and bring it back down to one. And then the transform four do the same thing. So now here's the full map image. So because I wanna move from the right to the left, I need to align my images that way. So all I'm gonna do is be moving this around. So you see these two things are the same. So now I can bring them close like this and just bring it down to 50% and align it like this. Bring the blend up. So now we have these images stitched together horizontally. What we have to do now is we have to position it so where both of our main focus points, the Colosseum, and, well, you can't even see it. This area over here, which is just the street. To fix that, we're just gonna grab one more transform node, put it in the viewer right here, and just move it over to where you see 
your first one and your second one. You can scale it down a little if you need to, but if you scale it down too much, you're actually gonna lose some quality. We're gonna jump into 3D space. This is gonna be crazy. So to start this, we're gonna grab this render 3D node. We're gonna grab this camera 3D. We're gonna grab the merge 3D and then grab this image plane 3D. This node converts all of this 2D stuff into 3D. Without this, you cannot use 2D stuff in 3D space. Connect everything together, and in your right view, put it on the media out, and then your left view, we're gonna go to the merge 3D and put it in there. Quickly, there's a few controls you need to know. You push the middle mouse to move horizontally and even vertically. To pan around, you're gonna hold the middle mouse and the right mouse and hold it and move it like this. And then to zoom in, you could hit control and scroll wheel. So now that we have the general idea of everything to do, we're gonna click on this camera 3D and we're gonna grab these handles right here and we're gonna pull it out into Z space. You see this, that we start seeing an image. So the camera right here is showing us this image, which is pretty cool. Also, while you're on the camera 3D node, make this focal length 47 millimeters. And that, that's only for this image though. Then I'm gonna go to the transform section under the camera 3D you can see here we have all of our different dimensions. So now we're gonna grab our camera and we're gonna drag it to our first point. And you can see right there, this is where our first screenshot was. So we're gonna zoom in to about right here. So because I'm using a 30 frames per second timeline, I'm gonna go half a second, which is 15 seconds. And under translation, I'm gonna hit the X, Y, and Z keyframes. Then I'm gonna go forward about a second, so about 45, I'm gonna zoom out. So of course I don't wanna be seeing this at all right here. So I'm gonna just zoom in again, but I'm not gonna match it up perfectly with the frame. And I'll tell you why in a second. So now that we have this first animation right here, we're gonna go from this 45 and go to about 90. So a second and a half. And we're gonna move it back just a little more to where it's right at that border. So this is what we have so far. So next we're gonna go to 120 frames and we're gonna drag the camera over to our second shot, which is gonna be the Colosseum. We're gonna make sure that it's in the middle. Then under frame 165, we're going to go to the Z up here on the translation and we're gonna type in 55. And then finally under frame 195, we're gonna zoom it in just like we did on this other image. So as is, that's pretty good. It's a little choppy for me. So we're gonna go into the spline tab. We're just gonna extend this, check the camera 3D, turn everything on, and then fit to zoom. So now we have this like jumbled mess. Pretty much what we wanna do is highlight everything and hit F. You see these curves right here, They're, they drop right at the end. I don't want that. I wanna click this first curve. I wanna make it more curvy. I'm gonna do the same thing over here to this one. Doing this is gonna make that transition from like the fast zoom to the slower zoom a lot smoother. We're gonna close the spline and we're gonna add some clouds and some planes in there. Because we're working in 3D space, we can do that. So we're gonna take our plane and our cloud and we're gonna drag that in. So because this is a 2D image, I need to grab the image plane 3D, which once again converts 2D to 3D and combine those together and grab the image plane and bring it to your merge 3D. So you can see that it imported on the same axis as this image, and we don't really want that. So under this image plane, we're gonna actually go to this transform, and we're gonna scale it down a lot, and then bring it back into Z space. Bring it over in front of this camera right here, so now you're seeing it there. I wanna rotate this though, so I'm gonna go right here under rotate, and you see this jumbled mess of lines and wires and stuff under this blue one i'm gonna grab it and i'm just gonna spin it like that and then click back to my move tool so now this is pretty cool it looks like you're far away because you have the clouds so then we're just gonna duplicate it by copying it hit Control c and then Control v and we're gonna add it to the merge again and then we're just gonna move this one over more to about right here so I'm just gonna add a few more cloud layers along this path, continuing to use copy and paste and moving everything over. So once you have your cloud layers where you want them, you're gonna add the plane now. And we're actually gonna animate the plane. So grab your image plane, combine that with the merge node, 
So the plane is actually on the same axis as this image right here. So we just need to bring it out. So there's the plane and we're just gonna scale it down really small. And we're gonna have it moving across our frame just like this. So I need to drag this over, see it right there. Probably scale it down a little more. It's, it's kind of still big. And we're gonna rotate it using this blue wheel again. Then I'm gonna bring it out of frame for now. So under frame 105, we're gonna animate it forward. So under image plane 3D, you're just gonna hit your X, Y, and Z. So under frame 140, we're gonna grab it and we're just gonna drag it across just like that. So now that we have that, it looks sick. And the final step is to add motion blur. So under render 3D, you're gonna go to the settings and you're gonna hit motion blur and just bring the quality of it up. So as I said earlier, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway for a social media lower thirds pack that I made to celebrate 2,000 and also 3,000 subscribers. I'm approaching 3,000 subscribers pretty fast here. So I'm gonna be releasing the pack within the next week or so, but to enter, you have to be subscribed to this channel, like the video, share it on one social media platform, and also just write one comment below. It could be anything. I'm gonna be giving away five of these packs and the winners are gonna be announced in next week's video. But as usual, the video on the top is a video all about a pretty much more simpler map zoom transition in DaVinci Resolve, and the video on the bottom is a video that YouTube thinks that you will like. But until the next one, peace.